border crossing made easy in one Kalyan case. And national awareness plan on cybersecurity, cybercrime at year end. Good evening, and you're watching News on 2 with me, Mohamed Amin. Now, two journalists who were pursuing the Wang Kalyan human trafficking case before it became public in late May 2015 recounted to the Royal Commission of Inquiry, or RCI, probing the matter how easy it was for them to cross over the border from Thailand to Malaysia illegally. Now, former Malay Mail reporter S. Aroldas, 64, said he, together with his photographer, Mohamed Sayuti Zainuddin, and two other Thai individuals who were acting as guides, had on 13 May 2015 climb up a hill from the Thailand side of Padambazar in their attempt to search for trafficking camps in Malaysia. Now, S. Aruldas said after close to two hours of hiking from the foothill, they finally reached the border separating the countries near Wangkalian, which he said was only separated by barbed wires. He said it was that he discovered several grave-like structures and an abandoned temporary camp in Wangkalian. The camps in Wangkalian were first discovered by Malaysian police in January 2015. However, it was only later, at the end of May, that the authorities disclosed the matter to the public. Former Chief Justice Tun Arifin Zakaria is chairing the RCI, which comprised seven members with former Inspector General of Police Sansri Norian Mai as their Deputy Chairman. The inquiry continues tomorrow. The government and the police have filed a civil forfeiture suit against former Premier Dr. Sri Najib Tun Raza, his wife, Datin Sri Rosma Mansour, and several others in relation to jewelry, cash, handbags, and luxury vehicles said to have been bought using One Malaysia Development Burhana 1MDB funds. Now, this follows two notices of motion and supporting affidavits filed at the High Court yesterday to seize a total of 711 million ringgit worth of items from these individuals. Now, the action was a follow-up to the seizure of valuables by police last year at properties within the Bukit Bintang area and other places after Pakatan Harapan won the 14th general election last 9th May. Now, the first notice of motion filed yesterday is to seize a property in the Klang Valley, cash, jewelry, handbags, watches, and sunglasses said to be worth 680 million ringgit. Now, the second notice of motion is to seize 31 million ringgit worth of items, including 27 luxury cars, cash, 29 bank accounts, as well as more watches and banks. Under Section 52A of the Anti-Money Laundering, Anti-Terrorism, Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001, a seizure order made under the act will cease to have effect after the expiration of 12 months from the date of the seizure order. The 12-month deadline in this case falls on 16th May. The 15th day of former Prime Minister Dr. Sri Najib Tun Razak's criminal trial involving the alleged misappropriation of funds from SRC International Cindy Ranberhard begins with a 29th prosecution witness and former Assistant Vice President of Retirement Fund Incorporated or KWAP Amirul Imran Ahmad. Now the proceedings were conducted before High Court Judge Mohamed Nazlan Mohamed Ghazali. Well, Amirul told the court that the asset agreement between KWAP and SRC International is called between financier and customer. He said the agreement is a Sharia method to facilitate Sharia compliance. And Amirul said during his experience as a KWAP officer, SRC International was the only company that failed to submit the documents and detailed information required by WKAP when applying for a loan with the retirement fund. In addition, Amirul said he does not agree with defense counsel Harvinder Jits suggestion that what SRC does with funds from KWAP is not the latter's business. In 2012, SRC International obtained two loans totaling 4 billion ringgit from WK, KWAP. The proceedings later continued with the fourth defense witness in Bank Negara officer Ahmad Farhan Sharifuddin. Ahmad Farhan testified that after the raid on Raja Chulan M Bank on 6 July 2015, the bank was fined for failing to send suspicious transaction report or STR to the central bank regarding the transactions involving Dadasri Najib's account. Ahmad Farhan, however, did not specify any details on the transactions and he was previously involved in a raid at M Bank in 2015. 
Well, a man was remanded for five days after he was arrested on a charge of robbing his ex-wife at Knife Point in front of the Fela Jenderak Ultra Mosque in Tamalo Pahang. And the remand order was issued today by the Assistant Registrar of the Tamalo Court, Hayatul Hafifi, according to Section 392-397 of the Penal Code. Now, it was believed that the 32-year-old suspect had stopped his former wife and her two sons, who were on a motorbike before pointing a knife at her and demanding for money. The suspect, who was divorced from his wife three years ago, escaped with 400 ringgit and a cell phone belonging to the woman. Well, four men pleaded guilty at the Johobaru Magistrate's Court on the charge of transporting 13 live chickens without any permit on an express bus from Kelantan to Johor. Now, the accused Fauzi Yazid, 47, Nick Norilham Mohammed, 41, Muhammad Zulhilmi Amzar Zuhaimi, and Raja Al Faisal Raja Aslan, both 27, made the plea in front of Magistrate Nurasida A. Rahman. Now, all four were accused of transporting the chickens inside the luggage compartment of Bus Express SP Bumi, owned by Sharikat Pengangkutan Bumi Pantai Timur Sendirian Berhad. Now, the offence was allegedly committed at the Larkin Central Terminal, Johobaru, Johor. Now, they are charged under paragraph of A of the Johor Flu Pandemic Disease Control Area Directive 20, 2005 for transferring the livestock without the proper approval from the State Veterinary Department Director and can be punished under Section 36, Subsection 7 of the Animals Act 1953, amended 2013. Now, Nick Norhilham was also ordered to pay a fine of 716 ringgit to the State Veterinary Department, while Raja Al Faisal and Fauzi were fined 109 ringgit each for the care and treatment costs of the livestock during the period they were held. Now, most traders in Kelantan disagree with the state government's order for restaurants to be closed from 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. during Ramadan. They said the new directive was inappropriate. Now, the traders said they understand the government's intention to ensure that the people can perform the Taraweh prayers, but perhaps the directive to stop the business operations should be reviewed. Now, they also question why the directive was only imposed on restaurants and food stalls and not on other businesses. Two days ago, a letter regarding the directive to food and beverage operators was issued by the Kelantan State Secretary Office and was with immediate effect. The instruction was issued in honor of Ramadan as well as attract people to perform Jarawe prayers in mosques or surahs. Eight cases related to citizenship and birth certificates have successfully been settled by Malacca National Registration Department NRD today. Now, six of them involved citizen cases are two related to birth certificate registration. Director Norazli Sulaiman said a case involving six-year-old Izara Hazreen Muhammad Hafiz was due to the fact that his mother had gone missing since his birth six years ago. The second case, however, involves a three-week-old baby whose birth certificate has incomplete information. Zero, pada ayat apa itu yang masalah yang berapi dengan cara cara yang saya sebutkan tadi berhubunglah dengan pihak pemimpin masyarakat yang terdekat dan kebetulan JPN Melaka ada enam buah pejabat di seluruh negeri ini dua di daerah Jasin, dua di daerah Lugajah dan dua di daerah Melaka Tengah jadi datanglah pada bila-bila masa waktu pada waktu pejabat untuk berusaha dengan kami dan insyaAllah kami akan membantu in the latest development, six Indonesians who applied for citizenship eight years ago have finally had their applications approved by the Home Ministry today. Norazli said this at a state-level NRD event in Jasin, Melaka. Well, Party Warisan Sabah President Dr. Sri Muhammad Shabi Abdal is confident that Sanakan voters will make the right choice in this Saturday's by-election for the future of Sandakan. Well, he said Pakistan Harapan's DAP candidate Vivian Wong Shur Yi is capable leader and would be able to bring changes and development and improve the lives of Sandakan residents. Dia muda didampingi, accessible to para pengundi dan dia punya tenaga dan saya rasa dengan kita bantuan bukan hanya kerajaan negeri kerajaan pusat dan kita yakin bahawa dia akan menjadi seorang wakil rakyat yang berkesan dan berkebolehan berkeupayaan untuk mewakili rakyat.
Dutta's Rima Machavi said this when asked about Pakatan Harapan's chances after a walkabout with DAP candidate Vivian Wong at the market downtown earlier today. He said Sanakan is a different story from the other by-elections as the constituents are wise and could not be easily manipulated. Dutta's Rima Machavi, who is also Sabah chief minister, added that despite the good feedback among the people towards Vivian, the election machinery would not be complacent and will campaign aggressively to get the desired result. Now, a national awareness plan on the management of cybersecurity and cybercrime will be launched at the end of this year. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail said the plan, which was being developed by the National Cybersecurity Agency, NAXA, was expected to be implemented in January 2020. Dr. Sri Dr. Wan Aziza, who is also chairman of the E-Sovereignty Committee, said various parties were involved in developing the plan, including government agencies, the private sector, industries and non-governmental organizations. The plan was an effort to address cyber threats comprehensively besides the national cyber security strategy, which was still being developed. Dan ini adalah salah satu daripada apa yang kita uh, tekankan adalah dengan mengurus uh, keselamatan cyber negara dan uh, kita ada juga Malaysia Cyber Security Strategy ya uh, dan kita nak bangunkan kerana ini adalah untuk menjaga saya diberikan satu taklimat memberikan satu monitor di mana kita melihat bagaimana serangan-serangan uh, cyber di luar negara ini uh, penting dalam kita punya sistem pembangkan kita punya sistem security she was met in a special interview at her office in Parliament House in conjunction with the first anniversary of the Pakatan Harapan PH government. Now, various new initiatives have been introduced to ensure the success of the Buy Malaysia campaign, which was reintroduced this year. Deputy Minister of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, Chong Chen Jian, said the campaign is being implemented in a more comprehensive, inclusive and high-impact mode. Jong said the campaign will cover efforts to enable Malaysian-made products penetrate the retail, sales and marketing sectors, both domestically and globally, through the digital medium and also through the various carnivals set to be held the whole year long. Mat matlamat akhir bagi kampen ini adalah untuk meningkatkan peng uh, penggunaan barangan tempatan di kalangan rakyat Malaysia dan penebusan produk-produk jenama tempatan ke luar negara. Bagi mencapai matlamat tersebut, kementerian akan bekerjasama era dengan semua kementerian, jabatan, agensi yang terlibat secara langsung atau tidak langsung yang berkaitan dengan pembangunan usahawan dan produk bagi memastikan supaya lebih banyak produk buatan Malaysia yang berpotensi dapat dikenal pasti dan diketengahkan kepada orang ramai. Chong said this year, the government has put aside 20 million ringgit to provide the various platforms for local manufacturers and service providers to gain access to hypermarkets, shopping malls and trade expos. The track project, which was introduced in March to ensure that the future of athletes are insured after retiring from sports, is expected to begin next month. And a total of 50 athletes will be injected into the job market and their performance will be monitored from time to time. Speaking on behalf of the Youth and Sports Ministry, Education Deputy Minister Tioni Ching said several government-linked companies and private companies have agreed to collaborate to make the project a reality. Sehingga kini, sebanyak 8 syarikat telah menawarkan peluang pekerjaan iaitu uh, Decathlon Malaysia, M uh, CIMB Foundation, uh, um, BSM, Baker Tele, Tel, uh, Telecom Malaysia, Maidi Mohamad Holdings Berhad, Lulu Group Retail and NRCB. The participation of the track project is now also open to former athletes. To date, two former hockey athletes and a former track and field Paralympic athlete have made an application. In a related development, Tio said the government has provided a grant of 3 million ringgit to the National Athletes Welfare Foundation to ensure that the welfare of athletes and former athletes are protected. 
Now, 10,948 children with a disability have been registered as special needs students, also known as MBK, in government schools nationwide as of 8th April. 9,545 of them are in primary school, while the latter are secondary school students. Deputy Education Minister Tony Ching said the total of MBK registrations have seen a significant rise each month. Following that trend, the ministry will work together with private sectors and non-government bodies to upgrade facilities for the disabled at relevant schools. Bukan semua sekolah adalah dilengkapi dengan kemudahan OKU. Tak oleh sebab itu... Tak tak saya ingin jelas sedikit. Eh. Mengapa sekolah-sekolah ya, 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 tidak... Ya, 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 ini bukan perbahasan. <laughs> saya, saya, saya faham. Tapi... Ya, 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 Sebentar, Terima. biar Menteri Abi dulu. Okay. Jadi, tapi kita KPM memang berhasrat untuklah uh, memberi ataupun melengkapkan sekolah-sekolah ini dengan kemudahan-kemudahan OKU. Jadi tahun ini kita ada uh, telah senaraikan 18 buah sekolah di mana kita akan uh, memberi uh, kemudahan-kemudahan OKU kepada sekolah-sekolah yang membekalkan pendidikan program pendidikan khas integrasi PPP. In addition, Teo said teachers' skills will be improved through the organization of workshops and teaching seminars. Aside from special needs schools, the ministry will also implement two MBK programs in ordinary schools, namely Inclusive Education Program, PPI, Mainstream and Special Education Integrated Program, PPKI. These programs will enable special needs students to learn alongside normal in a class in line with a zero rejection policy. So far, 6,202 schools have implemented the PPI program, while 2,343 schools implemented the PPKI program. Teo said this in response to Senator Bhavamani Krishnan in Parliament. Now, the 14th general elections brought many changes in terms of combating corruption in the country. And after a year taking over from the previous Barisan National Administration, Pakatan Harapan PH has carried out its main target of combating corruption with dedication and sincerity. Now, the efforts taken by the PH government to combat corruption today has been seen as one of the best achievements led by Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad since taking over the Premier's mantle last year. Now, among the initiatives implemented by Tun Dr. Mahathir to tackle corruption include having 90 government agencies either abolished, moved or turned into independent bodies. The Premier also announced that senior government officers can no longer hold more than five positions in government-linked companies or GLCs. He added that allowing a person to hold so many positions in various GLCs can cause problems, especially when it comes to contracts awarded by the government. Tun Dr. Mahathir said the previous government, having been in power for 61 years, would not have been defeated in the last general election if they had truly upheld their responsibilities and did not abuse the power given to them by the people. He said the previous BN government was replaced because the people knew the country was not administered well and that it was known as a kleptocracy country. And that concludes this evening's News on 2. In our top story, National Awareness Plan on Cybersecurity, Cybercrime at Year End. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Carlos. Thanks for watching and a very good evening to you.